Welcome to Lost Animals, the series where we take a look at a certain animal and why it became extinct. Our next animal is an unusual subspecies of plain zebra thanks to the color choice in its appearance, the quagga. This might be seen as a cross between a horse and a zebra, except not really. I think it is worth talking about this zebra since this is one of the famous extinct animals. So, here it comes. <laughs> the quagga was a subspecies of plain zebras that live in the Orange River in the Cairo region, South Africa. Their habitat was restricted to the grasslands and air interior scrubland of that region. The notable characteristic of their appearance is that a big part of their bodies is covered with solid brown and their stripes can only be seen in their heads and necks. Measuring this animal will be 257 inches in length, 125 to 135 centimeters in height, and 250 to 300 kilograms in weight. The name quagga came from the Kokoi word for zebra, matching the animal's call. The name is still used as a scientific name for the plain zebras. The animal was believed to be a distinct species, but future studies will later classify it as a subspecies. More on that later. Like the other subspecies, the quaggas only fit on grasses while they are in groups. But despite being close to other plain zebras, their behavior isn't well known. And why is that? Well, f humanity, that's why. The quagga was one of the victims of the large-scale hunting in South Africa during the 19th century. Because of the limited distribution, the animal was so easy to find and it became easy to kill. The quagga's flesh is being used as food for the farmers while the skins are used for some materials such as grain bags and leather. Great numbers of raw animal hides were exported during the 19th century for the leather industry. So, because to provide food for African laborers, they hunted the zebra non-stop along with other wild animals. The unwalking competitors did not make things any better. As the settler agriculture expanded into the quagga habitat, the farm animals outnumbered them and they stole the grass from them. In short, the quagga's decline will be blamed on the combination of economic pressures. While the quagga's population is declining, some of them were brought into European zoos. They say that the quaggas in captivity are tamer and docile, even more so than the board show zebra. And that's why there were attempts to domesticate them in South Africa. However, that wasn't enough to save the zebra. The attempts of breeding the quaggas failed. The last population in the wild was extirpated in the late 1870s on Orange Free State. The last known quagga in the wild died in 1878, and the last captain quagga died in 1883 in Amsterdam Natural Artist Magistrate Zoo. End the story? Well, no. There's something that I think is worth mentioning. <laughs> yep. There are attempts on bringing the quagga back to the savannas. A little bit of history. In 1971, Reinhold Rowe visited museums in Europe to study quagga specimens that remained over there. Because of his interest in the zebra, he was inspired to bring the species alive. The problem is that back in the day, the quagga was thought to be a separate species from other zebras, so, they believed that the genetic material of the extant zebras weren't suitable for breeding quaggas. But two decades later, with the newly developed genetic techniques, they extract DNA from the remains that Rolf had stored. And it turns out that the quaggas DNA matched with the ones of plain zebras. Rolf has used these results to justify his project of returning the animal, the quagga project. There's something that I want to point out. Selective breeding is just having a choice of two parents with particular characteristics to produce an offspring. That's not quite the same as cloning an individual with its DNA. The project uses this method by selecting additional zebras in order to resemble the original quagga. The results? Well, it looked like this. 
Yeah. The project in general has tried to breed zebras whose few stripes are missing, along with some brownish coloring in small parts. Ugh, that wasn't enough convincing. These zebras still don't resemble 100% of the real quaggas. Also, the behavior of the actual quaggas is so little known that it's unlikely that these zebras will feel the same. As a result, these zebras are labeled as raw quaggas to separate them from the actual quaggas. So no, the quagga who once lived in the Orange River didn't return, and probably it never will. Unless you want to screw nature. The quagga was a victim of not only the overhunting, but also the terrible circumstances that the farmers have brought. Similar to the Great Oak, the quagga was killed for food and resources until every single one of them was wiped out. The sad part is that not many people knew that the quagga was in danger until it was too late. The attempt to break back the animal felt pointless because of the lack of full knowledge of the animal and the fact that the zebras felt inferior when it came to appearance. Today, there are only 23 stuffed specimens of the quagga, which you can see only in the museums. So far, this is the only such species that we have covered in this series. I'm pretty sure that there are other interesting such species that might be featured in this series. What I'm sure, however, is that the quagga is the most famous extinct subspecies, and that's thanks to its distinctive appearance from the other plain zebras that still live today.